As per my discussion with Madame Majaka the other day, I'm not relying on Hatsune's kindly ministrations, even for my meals. Uh, Hatsune blows in the food to cool it down for me. Intensely serious about her task. Thanks. I sheepishly opened my mouth. Ever due to my ill-timed fit of embarrassment, I completely miss Hatsune's chopsticks. Uh, my bad. Quickly plucked the food off the top to me and ferried it to my mouth. Okay, I'm able-bodied enough to wash my hands. I don't worry about it. I'll just head over to the washroom later. Okay, Hatsune, now that's weird. Now instead of having food substance on my fingers, I'm gonna have your sticky saliva all over my fingers. I'm still gonna need to wash my hands. Feel Hatsune's tongue gliding over my fingertip. Her face is bright red as she sucks on my finger. She pulls my finger out and stares at me blankly, her eyes moist. Hatsune-san? Hatsune! She averts her face as it's steadily getting redder and redder. Man, getting embarrassed just watching her like this. Um. Damn, this is awkward. Thanks. <laughs> Despite the embarrassing situation we find ourselves in, I'm somehow able to resume my meal. After I finished eating. Uh, 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 what's up? Hatsune hesitates with the tray in her hands. Don't make me do this. Like, oh, I can meet up with that person who might be connected to uh, one of my previous cases. Might be a good idea to meet up with her. Also, I know Toji wanted to meet up at 5 p.m. I don't know if that's today or the next day. But now Hatsune is like, uh, you know, if I, I don't, if you wanted to hang out or something, I, I don't have to work tomorrow. So you know, if you wanted to like be a be a homie and come through, I'm like, of course I want to be your homie, Hatsune. Why? Oh, well, it's great. I know you tend to overwork yourself sometimes. It's good for you to relax from time to time. She fidgets around again, hesitating. Is there something else you wanted to tell me? Yes. Yes. What is it? The corners of Hatsune's eyes fill with tears. Uh, wait, Hatsune, I'm not mad at you at all. It's okay, just say it, please. <laughs> She steals herself up and shouts. Hatsune averts her face, which is now bright crimson. Ah. So that's what she was waffling over. I see. So there's something you'd like? Hatsune, you've been taking great care of me. I want to give you something back in return. So feel free to tell me what you want. Oh, before you do, keep in mind that I'm dirt poor. I won't be able to get you anything too expensive. She trails off awkwardly. Sure, me too. Hatsune gives me a curt bow, then exits my room. But, think of her Hatsune's behavior. You now that she adores me like an older brother. However, it seems like lately she's been a little more bold, audacious. At any rate, it's kind of confusing to say the least. I kind of get the feeling that she's starting to mature. Well, her body has suddenly started to take on some more feminine curves as of late. Last night when I saw her chest and behind, they were pretty nicely filled out. Whoa, 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 hold it right there. Shake my head to clear away the dangerous thoughts. Maybe she's to make her debut as a prostitute soon. A body like that, she's probably ready to take on customers. And shortly after lunch, 
I arrive at our designated meeting place at roughly the correct time. So why the hell are you here? Does the phrase mind your own business ring any bells? あの、まあ、ご希望とあれば余計なお世話という政府に関して。no, you're demonstrating right now that you don't know what the phrase means. <笑><笑> You're just saying the first thing that comes to shut the fuck up. You're just saying the first thing that comes to mind. If that's the case, and you're. No. Nana and I proceed to argue on and on. 15 minutes later, I introduce myself to Ayasaki Takako once again. Anna. Yeah, it has. When she bows to me, her golden hair flows down the nape of her neck and shines glossily as it catches the sun. Seeing that hair brings the memories floating back inside my head. It all happened shortly after I became a detective. It was a murder case in Izumo regarding a family inheritance. My duty was to protect the third daughter of the Ayasaki family, but to possess the inheritance rights, Ayasaki Takako. <laughs> she beams back at me. Well, that aside, I can't believe that little girl grew up to be such a beautiful young lady. Alright, I'm really sorry about earlier. I let myself get riled up by Nana. I didn't mean to ignore you, Ayasaki-san. Akko waves her hand around in rebuttal. She's the sheltered type who has a calm, gentle disposition. Yeah, thanks. No, we don't get along at all. ひどいな、シュウゴ。そんな限界に否定されたら僕が傷つくじゃないか。No, she's lying. The truth is I've given some serious thought to the prospect of severing all my ties to this old brat. Takako-kun,これがシュウゴなりの愛情表現なんだ。I told you she's lying. Normally I'd be a bit suspicious at this point. Surely there's a limit to her naivety. Even if she happens to be the daughter of the powerful Ayasaki family. Anyway, Nana, having you around just complicates things. Buzz off, will ya? Huh? Chastity? The hell kind of strange thing is she spewing out? Nana lowers her voice and points towards Takako. What? My eyes are involuntarily drawn to Takako's face. <laughs> Although she doesn't deny it, she's like, oh, you're embarrassing me. Anyway, let's see that dick boy. Even though Nana said something absolutely outrageous, Takako doesn't seem to mind much at all. She blushes slightly and giggles. Are spoiled rich girls all like this? Well, it's not the time to be impressed. Nana, aren't you being rude? You need to apologize to Ayasaki-san right this instant. Nana cocks her head toward me sadly. Sheesh, at least deny it. There's gotta be some basis for this if you keep saying it, right? After Nana and me, Nana launches into her story, completely oblivious to the fact that she should be leaving right about now. One day after school, I was walking down the hallway with the magazine in hand, about to head on home. Oh yeah, Takoku-kun. 
この雑誌のことかいこれは今週発売された「女学生の友」という文芸雑誌の最新号だよまあそうですのうむ実はこの雑誌の主題は少女同士の禁じられた性愛なんだが好奇心から一読してみたものの僕にはいまいち理解できなかったまあ長さんったらああお姉さま犯人ですと由美は小鳥のような声でささやいて幸子様の慈悲を請いましたですが幸子様の薄着ねで触れるような優しくも残酷な愛部は「由美怖がらなくてもいいのよ私まあ<笑>そしてついに幸子様の指先が由美の敏感なつぼみに触れました「くちゅり」と陰美な音がして由美の声が聞こえてくるのです「うわあお姉さま」ユミはたまらず幸子様の背中に爪を立てました<笑>ドキドキ一部抜粋すると以上のような具合になるんだけどまあ奈々さんったらそんなこと恥ずかしくて口に出せませんわそうか高子くんには理解できたんだね羨ましいななんだか僕の感性に欠陥があるような気がしてきたよ<笑>まあそうなんですのいやいやちょっと待つんだ高城奈々諦めるのはまだ早いぞ100の知識も1の実践にしかずここよし高子くん付き合ってくれたまえまあ<笑>まあ<笑> That's how I ended up leading 高子くん into an empty classroom Oh Oh いい、ね、ドキドキドキドキ<笑> And Sakaka just goes along with all of it. She's like, oh, all right. I must learn by doing. Sakaka, come with me. We're gonna have Sesby and Lex now. She's like, uh, okay. Slip my fingers between her thighs and touch the area inside her skirt. Ah, Nana san, Kanin desu no. How afraid to not cease my cruelly at tender caresses. Sakaka, go a gara nakta no inda. Boku ni zenbu makasete. My slender white fingers burn with their way. Lewd noise, warm honey, petals. <laughs> Nana san! Ah. To, ma, so na guai ni, hana hada shiku wakage ga itatte shimatta wake nan da kodo. Wasn't the entire thing Nana's doing? It's only cursed my abomination of a little sister. Koko de mondae ga hitotsu. この実験においてタカコくんの反応は予想外に激しかったんだ<笑><笑>ナナさんったらそんなこと周吾様の前でおっしゃってしまうなんて She blushes in embarrassment Birds of a feather flock together These two are pretty much the living embodiment of that saying 周吾も変だと思うだろだって僕の方はちっとも感じたりしなかったんだ役柄を交換したりいろいろと試してみたのにもかかわらず、ね、We to try to <笑>その事実を重く見た僕は高子くんには淫乱の気があると結論するしかなかったの、no, she just likes women and you don't and、uh, how should I put this you girls are both kind of weird <laughs> that is also true as we continue our pointless discussion my appointed meeting time with Toji draws near なんだいシュウゴもう行ってしまったタカコんとの関係が進展しなくてほっとした反面なんだか寂しくもあるよいやいや僕も立派に乙女だね There's nothing pure in your heart, ma'am 恋愛と友情の板挟みあー悩ましい今夜も眠れない夜になりそうだ Oh, give it a rest, Nana Give her a light bonk in the noggin まあまあ<笑> <laughs> That's her response for everything. Ah. Oh. Asaki san, you should pick some better friends. All joking aside, my little sister is really weird. So, speaking of being weird, I suppose Takako falls into that category as well. Well, yeah, I'm sure after she was diddling you in the fucking classroom. Right. Oh, it's not like I could force her to sever a relationship with Nana. Yojin no ikanar hinan ni mo hensets s u r u k o t o g a n a i 
I can hear the emotion in Nana's voice. It's strange to hear my little sister saying something like that. Come from her, it just sounds like a lie. Yeah, I have an appointment I can't skip out on. I apologize for not being able to have a fulfilling conversation, even though it's been so long since we've last seen each other. Well, what was the blame for that lies with Nana? After hearing me out, Takako abruptly turns to me with a serious look on her face and says, or what now? Promise? Wow, about that. I'm actually busy tomorrow. Wouldn't you know it? I, I made plans with little homie. Hmm. Tomorrow? Think about it. They make that promise to go shopping with Hatsune tomorrow. I'm rather curious about the promise Takago has brought up, but I'll have to refuse for now. I'm sorry to say this, but we got other plans tomorrow, I respond. She puts a profound look of disappointment onto her face. <sighs> Sigh escapes from between my lips. Chatting with Nana and Takako tired me out more than I would have liked. It's because I'm so much older than they are. Perhaps it's because they're both just plain weird. All it's could be both, you know, a bit of both, but uh, I think it's a lot more of the latter. Yeah, it's definitely because they're both weirdos. <laughs> Queen. Uh, what wounds me is the fact that humans will never be able to truly understand each other. Yeah, my wounds are doing just fine. Still have a minor headache, though. The awkward silence drags on. Nana's talkativeness is pretty annoying, but Toji's reticence is kind of problematic as well. No, it isn't. She's a queen. Um, why don't we get down to business? So then. Toji nods silently, then pulls out a notebook from her bag. Oh, so you finally got it. Hyo. She's the girl the Hand of Death is chasing, the girl who looks exactly like Kazuna. There's a very good possibility that's Kosuke Yura under an assumed identity. Got it. Doji nods and flips through the notebook. Oh, so this is a real story. Damn, who would have guessed? A certain religious cult. A cult? You know your name, but I know it. It's a Christian Christian Christian. Senri. I've heard the name from Doji before. The name of the three people. シグサトキコ。上の界隈で最近流行っている宗教団体、戦利教の幹部だという話だ。センリーズコートシビロングスト。ああ、それについても調べてある。ちょっと待ってくれ。ダジスタイズエクスプレイニングシーリーズト
Doji suddenly stops talking. Doji? She ponders things for a few moments and continues. Of course. She lowers her voice. Sure, I don't mind. No, I totally forgot about them. What are you talking about? Of course, how could I possibly forget? My hands had brushed against Rin's bleeding corpse. No way I could forget something like that. Oh, they were prophesized, huh? They were prophesized. It's almost like the leader fucking... <laughs> wow. At that point, I wouldn't be like, whoa, he's a prophet. He's, he clearly can like see ahead of the times. At that point, I'm like, okay. Somehow this man predicted how this woman would end up like this. Like, uh, I think we need to start asking some questions here, fellas. What? Surprised Yelp escapes from my lips. Since Toji looks unusually serious, I thought she was going to bring up something deep, but... Bullshit. I'm surely just making things up. They probably just insisted they knew it all along after the fact, all in a day's work for that shame of a priestess. However, Toji's serious expression does not change. Oh, that's different. Oh, that's different. Oh, that's different. Man, this whole time I'm sitting here like, well, yeah, if you like, oh, I prophesied something a few days ahead of time, so now when it happens, it's like, oh, damn, who would have guessed? Almost like I prophesied that. Two years ago, though, that's that's uh that's pretty significant, actually. You got me there, huh? Sendikyogagenzai yeah, no, if you're, <laughs> you predicted two years ahead of time, like, I don't know how long he was in connection with this Kaoru lady, with the Kao, Kaoru lady, but, uh, you know, so, okay, so when did, Wait, when did the first, when did Kaoru's first victim happen? It, it was recently, like, because for X amount of years, Ka Kaoru would just existed as, like, a, a devout believer. And then there was the kid, but when did the kid take place? Because if the kid happened, two years ago and like this man like knew what this woman was capable of capable of that's interesting especially if he treated her like a friend right interesting interesting so I'm, just, I'm saying if he had managed to plan this all out ahead of time and then like like he he knew one day Kaoru would be useful Right, like that. Still, to plan out the murders exactly as predicted. Well, maybe that's why it took two years to happen, right? You had to wait for all the stars to align just right. I doubt that's the case, but man, I could imagine like you're trying to line up all these details perfectly. But to get them all to line up perfectly one after another, that's a. Uh... Yeah. That's a. Uh... Yeah, no, you, you hit me with, uh, with some very hard to process information there, Toji. Well, not process, but uh, not something I can just immediately rationalize away. Like, oh, two years ago? Well, here's the easy solution for that. Uh, you definitely given me that information that's uh, making me have to sit here and think. Exactly as they predicted? Toji nods quietly. Okay. Well, that's vague. 
a beast that consumes flesh. So if he found out about the missing student two years ago and managed to figure out who that person was, like, okay, you figured it out. A dark wing messenger from the heavens. That's obviously Otoa's murder with the wings sewn to her. But guess what? That was not Kaoru who did that one. At least we're pretty sure at this point because it doesn't fit the MO of any of the other murders. So that was clearly one that he did in advance. I thought like when they said the way they died was very, was exactly, I thought they meant like the prophecies were very specific, but it's like a beast that consumes human flesh, a dark winged messenger from the heavens. It's like, yeah, no, like, like he found a cannibal and I was like, oh, I'm gonna predict a beast that consumes human flesh. Of course you start with that. And then once her actions become known, all right, now the rest of them, he just has to fulfill himself. I don't know what's next in the prophecies, but it's like, like he found the beast that consumes flesh, right? And it's like, once those actions, be then he just added on anything else, right? So once that one, that first one becomes known, he just has to start doing the others himself. And oh, all of a sudden his prophecies are coming true. A chill runs up my spine. They refer to Hukumizukawara and the strange corpse she produced. However, the only thought in my mind is... That's ridiculous. I shake my head in rebuttal. Gimme. Show me these prophecies. If they're all as vague as this shit, like, nah, give me these prophecies. It's a simple coincidence, or they're stretching it to fit. At any rate, prophecies in their ilk don't exist. I don't even think it's coincidence. I think it was planned. I think everything else afterwards is planned out, but like, if it's as vague as that, you could do anything. A dark winged messenger, right? Like, that hell the amount of crows that have wound up dead you could just point to that and be like the dark wing messenger of death ah you know i want to see these prophecies i want to see just how fucking vague they are because like yeah no you make all these prophecies you know the first one is true and will happen at some point right you know there's a cannibal in ueno you know eventually their actions will come to light or maybe this person even helped those actions come to light in some way. Like they purposely made some choices so that they would come to light in some fashion, right? So if you know that first quote unquote prophecy is true and you just start adding to that list, all you have to do is make sure you can fulfill whatever you add to the list. Oh, you wanna make some kind of prophecy about the dark winged messenger of doom. It's like, all right, yeah, no, I, 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 I can think of something. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Pretty vague. We can figure something out there. I want to see this list of prophecies. I want to see these list of pro list of prophecies. Show me the prophecies. Toji sighs. The escaped mistress. I'm gonna think of it. We were so engrossed to talk about the prophecies that I didn't even ask her about the main point. Toji, so I grew up in Hyor. Before I can finish asking my question. Ah, Shugo -san! Hi, Kazna. Kazna shows up carefree as ever. <laughs> Doji looks embarrassed by the unexpected intruder. Hey, about your theater rehearsals. Is an opening day coming up pretty soon? Kazna informed me that their duties with her company would prevent her from showing up at the Ikishiro in the near future. Kazna turns around and points towards an area farther inside the store. Huh, they look like theater people to me. Uh, 
Oh, you actually get nervous, Kazna. Well, that's a new face. <laughs> nah, I didn't mean it that way. I laugh off Kazna's protests. That means that this production is pretty massive, huh? Hey, I'm not the one to ask. Kazuna regains her composure, continues. Overseas? Why? Kazuna's eyes sparkle brightly. Oh, it's pretty awesome. Means you gotta give it everything you've got tomorrow, huh? I nod, impressed. Glance over to discover Toji with a grim look on her face. Oh, right. Whoops, I'd stop for a pleasant chat with Kazuna even though I was in the middle of my conversation with Toji. The wry smile on my face, I've turned to face Kazuna. Kazuna, Toji and I need to continue our discussion. I'm sorry, but could you... Kazuna bows an apology. She presses the stubs of paper into her hands. What, what time is it? What time is the perform? Is it tomorrow night? Because I'm, I, I, I'm going to be hanging out with Hatsune. The title print on the ticket is Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Oh wow, doing one of the classics, huh? Someone suddenly speaks up from behind me. Eh? Spin around to find. You're the murderer. I don't like your vibes. You're the murderer, aren't you? I just get the vibe. You're the murderer. So you know, Standing there behind me is a young man wearing a composed expression. Kazuna makes a funny sound when she sees him. She bobs her head repeatedly in apology. Up, uh, Kazna, who's he? Assuming he's someone involved in the production. Kazuna turns to face us and says, uh, you killed someone. Artistic director, huh? Because we know those wings that were sewn onto Otoa's body were artificial wings, right? They were fake. So, someone in, I don't know, the props department? Maybe like an artistic director? would know how to make up some fake wings. Mmm, mayhaps. Yeah, maybe. Mmm. At first I was just like throwing accusations because he's like the first new guy that I've seen. So I'm like, ah, I, we know that the killer is a guy because he was given the pipe to the priestess. I'm like, you're the first guy I've seen. It's you. But now you're telling me artistic director? Mixed in with the fact that we know someone made up them fake wings that looked good for the record. They weren't just like some shitty put together stuff. There's someone with some skills, right? Someone who's uh, got a, a knack for, I don't know, art direction? Hmm? Mayhaps? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? It's you. It's you. 
Akal Ikma nods his head at me coolly. He turns to Kazuna, waiting for her to introduce us. Hello there. Taj and I both respond rather indifferently. However, the young man's reaction is far more animated than anything I'd expected. Huh. He suddenly reaches out to shake my hand. Oh, he knows who we are. Oh, he knows who we are. Uh oh, he knows who we are. That's bad. <laughs> that, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Right. I can't believe she blabbed about it, even though I strictly told her to keep her mouth shut. Kazuna gets all flustered after I shoot her a distinctly accusatory look. I don't think I can do about it at this point, since he already knows. Sigh deeply and turn to face Akao. Ah, I can't take credit for that. Is that why you made those prophecies? In the hope that a, a detective would come through and meet her on justice? You sick bastard. I got the glance at his wristwatch. Yes, how unfortunate. How unfortunate you can't stick around. I wouldn't, actually. I would not like to go to your atelier. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm rather reluctant to go. However, he is a friend of Cosmos. I can't just flat out refuse him. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. I, I know the Japanese are all about manners and politeness. All right, but listen. Yes, you can. <laughs> Tell him no, creepy fuck. Sure, I guess I don't mind. Oh, this is fun. Claps stands together in an exaggerated fashion. Akao then leaves a business card with his address on the table. <laughs> God, you gave me the creeps. Come over any time when it's convenient for you. Like, no, 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 no. Sure, I got it. I'll just play along for the time being. Regrettably, I have zero interest in the fine arts. In reality, I probably won't have any chances to actually go and visit. But eventually, that's going to come into play, right? Eventually, that's going to come into play. We have that business card with his address on it. We're going to be like, where could the killer be? You know, what's his location? Where's he going to go to next? And you're going to be like, I have his business card. The address of his atelier. I know where to find him. Some shit like that. Grins a cousin with that same composed expression on its face. Her eyes sparkle with joy. God damn it. Well, now that Kazna's gonna go, we have to. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, y'all said you were supposed to leave like a while ago. Like, everyone's waiting outside. I don't know how long we've been sitting here chatting, but it, it's been a hot minute. Takes Kazna's hand and says, Shall we go? Uh, hi. After energetically bidding us farewell, Kazna is led out of the store by Akao. <laughs> Dudgy stands up from her seat. Dudgy, we still haven't finished our conversation. It's quite unlike her to cut things short in the middle of a conversation. Is she really that angry about those two interrupting? No, she's got her suspicions about Akao, right? Yeah. Oh? What are you talking about? Well, of course I'm coming with you. Kyo had started visiting the cult's temple a while before she disappeared. What did she seek from Senri? What did she believe? Even if the answers to those questions existed within the Hand of Death's information network, Toji wasn't able to find him. 
People belonging to the cult have always been tight-lipped. They never open up their hearts to people not of their faith. Therefore... Uh, that's the grand conclusion Toji has drawn. Well, come to think of it, there's no place like a religious organization to hide an ordinary person who has no outside support. Even the Hand of Death's extensive search network wasn't able to infiltrate Senri's temple. Everybody there forgets their past and devotes themselves wholeheartedly to the faith. Kyo might even be there, right at this very moment. Shugo. Toji suddenly halts. Huh? What's wrong? Oh, are we gonna go see it with Hatsune then? She holds out the ticket that Kazuna had given to her. What a waste. Even though she lives in such a bloodthirsty world, Toji's favorite pastimes include activities like watching movies and reading. Are you sure, Toji? I don't think just anyone can get their hands on these. Toji's looking a great deal more glum than usual. Probably really regrets not being able to attend the performance. I suppose I'll take it then. Probably try give inviting Hatsune, Madame Ajaka, or somebody else at Yikishiro. Toji clicks her tongue in annoyance after I take her ticket. Well, if you want to see it that badly, there's got to be a way you can get out of it, right? Taking someone to stand in for you or something. Toji's expression sours even more after I say that. I mean, you're right, but ouch. She glares at me bitterly. Oh, come on, I've had my share of hardships. If I say the wrong th thing now and inc incense her further, huh, I'm going to leave this place in a world of pain. Even after I wisely decide to keep my mouth shut, Toji keeps grumbling. Do you want the ticket back, Toji? <laughs> I'll let you have it. On our way to Sunray's headquarters. Hold up. A thought suddenly pops into my head and I draw to a halt. How's the Sunray investigation going to work? How long will it take? Toji stops to ponder a bit. I see. That's the case, and I'll definitely be needing some of those. You know, emergency rations. Got my stomach growling in the middle of this important infiltration operation, right? Yeah, you can start calling me Mr. Serious. It's how serious I am. There's a glimmer of what looks like resignation in Toji's eyes. Really? Thanks, Toji. I got my thanks with my serious game face on. Made a lot of plausible sounding excuses in my day. However, this time, I really am just hungry.